Have you ever wondered how a people's revolt can change the course of history? Welcome to our journey through the French Revolution. As we step back in time, let's immerse ourselves in the late 18th century, a period where France was teetering on the brink of a monumental shift. The societal structure was divided into three estates, the clergy, the nobility, and the commoners. The first two estates, though small in number, enjoyed immense privileges, while the third estate, which constituted the majority of the population, shouldered the heavy burden of taxes. This glaring inequality was a ticking time bomb, waiting to explode. Adding fuel to the fire was the state of France's economy. The country was drowning in debt, a consequence of years of war and extravagant spending by Louis XVI and his predecessor. The commoners, already struggling under the weight of heavy taxation, were further burdened as the government tried to pull itself out of financial ruin. Bread, a staple food, became a luxury many couldn't afford, leading to widespread hunger and discontent. Amidst this turmoil, the winds of enlightenment were blowing across Europe, reaching the shores of France. Thinkers like Voltaire, Rousseau, and Montesquieu challenged the existing norms, advocating for liberty, equality, and fraternity. These ideas resonated with the commoners who were growing increasingly resentful of their circumstances. The Enlightenment spurred intellectual curiosity and fostered a spirit of questioning authority, ultimately stirring revolutionary sentiments among the masses. However, the spark that ignited the flame was the Estates General of 1789. Louis XVI convened this meeting in a desperate attempt to resolve the financial crisis. But this gathering, the first in over 150 years, only served to highlight the stark disparities among the estates, further inflaming the simmering anger of the Third Estate. With the seeds of discontent sown, the stage was set for an uprising that would shake France to its very core. As the nation buckled under the weight of its own inequities, the spark of rebellion was ignited. The year was 1789, a time when France was a powder keg of social and economic unrest. The country was on the brink of bankruptcy due to costly wars and the extravagant spending of the monarchy. Meanwhile, the common people, who made up the vast majority of the population, were burdened with heavy taxes and food shortages. The king, Louis XVI, had little choice but to convene the Estates General, an assembly representing France's three estates the clergy, the nobility, and the commoners. However, the voting system was heavily skewed in favor of the upper classes, with the first two estates each having as many votes as the third. This was despite the fact that the third estate made up 90% of the population. In a bold move, the third estate, refusing to be outvoted, declared themselves the National Assembly. They were determined to create a constitution that would limit the powers of the king and ensure equality among all citizens. In a room at a tennis court near the palace in Versailles, they took an oath, now known as the Tennis Court Oath, pledging not to disband until a new constitution was established. The revolution truly ignited with the storming of the Bastille on July 14th. The Bastille, a state prison, was seen as a symbol of the monarchy's absolute power and its fall marked the beginning of the French Revolution. The commoners, fueled by anger and desperation, stormed the prison, freeing its prisoners and seizing its ammunition. The storming of the Bastille was more than a violent riot, it was the embodiment of a nation's desperate cry for liberty. It was a clear message to the ruling classes that the people were no longer willing to endure their oppressive rule. The revolution had begun, and there was no turning back. The flame of rebellion had been lit and it would burn until the old order was reduced to ashes. In the midst of revolution, the line between justice and tyranny can become blurred. This was the harsh reality that France faced during the radical phase of the French Revolution, a time we now refer to as the Reign of Terror. The Reign of Terror, or La Terreur, as it was called, stretched from the mid of 1793 until late 1794. This was a time when the French government decided to take drastic measures to protect the newly formed republic from foreign invaders and internal dissent their weapon of choice, the guillotine. The guillotine has become synonymous with the reign of terror. This machine, designed as an instrument of egalitarian justice, became a symbol of indiscriminate death. Thousands of people, from aristocrats to commoners, lost their lives under its blade. The reign of terror was not just about physical violence, but also about psychological control. 
It was a time when the French government used fear as a tool to keep the population in line. Anyone who was suspected of being a counter-revolutionary could be arrested, tried, and if found guilty, executed. At the helm of this terror was Maximilien Robespierre, a lawyer turned revolutionary. Robespierre was a key architect of the reign of terror. He was a staunch advocate for the Republic and the rights of man, but his methods were controversial to say the least. He believed that terror was necessary to achieve the goals of the revolution. Yet, as the death toll rose, the French people grew increasingly disillusioned with the revolution and its leaders. The promise of liberty, equality, and fraternity seemed to be replaced by fear, suspicion, and death. Eventually, this led to the downfall of Robespierre himself, who was executed in July of 1794, effectively ending the reign of terror. The reign of terror, a dark period of French history, demonstrated how the pursuit of liberty can sometimes veer off course. It's a chilling reminder of the potential dangers that can arise when power is placed in the wrong hands, and the fine line between revolution and tyranny becomes blurred. In the wake of chaos, a new order often emerges. As the tumult of the French Revolution subsided, the echoes of its impact reverberated not only through the halls of the French government but also across the globe. The revolution's most notorious figure, Maximilien Robespierre, met a fate not dissimilar to those he had once condemned. The architect of the reign of terror, Robespierre's fall from grace was precipitous. He was arrested and fittingly guillotined in July of 1794, effectively ending the reign of terror he had so fervently championed. The power vacuum left by Robespierre's downfall was swiftly filled by a figure who would go on to shape not just France but the entire world. A young, ambitious general by the name of Napoleon Bonaparte seized control in a coup d'etat in 1799. Napoleon's rule, often referred to as the Napoleonic era, marked a new chapter for France. It was an era of reforms and expansion, of ambition and conquest. While Napoleon's rule had its share of controversies, it's undeniable that he left a lasting impact on France. His Napoleonic Code, a set of civil laws, influenced legal systems across the globe and remains a cornerstone of French law to this day. His dreams of empire, while ultimately his downfall, reshaped the map of Europe and had far-reaching impacts on global politics. The French Revolution was more than just a period of upheaval and change within France. It was a catalyst for change across the world, a beacon of hope to those yearning for freedom from oppression, and a stark warning to those who would deny their citizens these rights. It demonstrated the power of the people when united against tyranny and the potential for societal transformation when that power is harnessed. The French Revolution, a tumultuous period of bloodshed and transformation, left an indelible mark on human history. The ripple effects of this revolution continue to shape our world in ways we may not even fully comprehend. It serves as a testament to the potential for change and the enduring spirit of humanity's quest for liberty and justice.